Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I've been a family systems therapist for 32 years, and during that time I've learned a great deal about communication, about human development, about recovery from childhood trauma, and about relationships. This video is about how to improve some relationships. It's part of lesson four in my nonprofit educational website at sfhelp.org. Have you ever been involved, directly or indirectly, in what can be called a relationship cutoff? That is, something that occurs when two people, or more, refuse all contact with each other. They choose not to communicate, and they will go out of their way to avoid seeing, talking to each other. Um, for the purposes here, I'm going to call that a relationship cut off. Um, that damages families and groups, it damages self-esteem, and it damages relationships. There are ways to avoid and resolve such cutouts, cutoffs. Um, that's my purpose in this brief summary video. Um, frequently, when cutoffs occur, each person blames the other. Each person finds fault with the other person's personality or their behavior or their values or something about them and says, it's not my fault, it's theirs. Uh, there is mutual finger pointing, mutual blame, and denial of personal responsibility. That's characteristic. It's one of the things that keeps cutoffs going. That is a surface reason for cutoffs. It is not the reason, the real reason, um, as you probably know, uh, when cutoffs occur, they often polarize people into two camps, those who support person A and think person B is a terrible person, or those who support person B and vice versa. So cutoffs involve more than just two people, especially if there are children involved. In my opinion, after 32 years of study, and with the help of over a thousand clients, students, friends, teachers, I believe there are three primary reasons that cutoffs occur. Knowing these reasons can help you avoid or resolve existing cutoffs. The first one, and the least well known, is that one or both people carry significant psychological wounds from early childhood trauma. I'm not going to explain that here, but I do at great length in my Lesson 1 videos. I hope you'll take a look at that after you finish this. Psychological wounds briefly include excessive shame, guilt, fear, reality distortion, difficulty trusting, and difficulty bonding with other living things, especially people. So when cutoffs occur, suspect that one or both people are carrying some version of these wounds. I left out the biggest wound of all, which is a fragmented personality. That's the primary wound. There are six wounds. So that's the first cause of cutoffs. And typically, the people in the cutoff are unaware of this and or they deny that they have any wounds or the wounds are significant. The second of three reasons that cause relationship cutoffs is that one or both people are ignorant of these things. They don't know how to spot and resolve values conflicts. A values conflict occurs when I think X and you think Y. Neither of us is right or wrong. We have different opinions. People in cutoffs often are snared in major values conflicts and they don't know how to resolve them. The resolution, simply put, is to agree to disagree and or to seek a compromise. So people in cutoffs typically don't know how to do that or don't want to do that because their wounds prevent them. They also don't know how to maintain a genuine mutual respect attitude. 
that says my dignity and worth is no better and no worse than yours. We are of equal value. They don't know how to keep that attitude because they're controlled by a false self. They also don't know, typically, how to identify their own primary needs and the other person's primary needs. And even if they do, they don't rank their needs equally. They say, my needs come first. So that promotes ongoing cutoffs. They also don't know, typically, how to admit and what to do about power struggles. If you're controlled by a false self, frequently it is intolerable to be wrong. You have to be right. So you must prove to your other partner in the cutoff, I'm right, you're wrong, here's why, blah, blah, blah. That keeps the cutoff from resolving. One of the biggest reasons that cutoffs continue or start in the first place is typically both people do not know how to communicate effectively. That means they don't know how to identify their needs, assert their needs, listen effectively, and do win-win problem solving. Instead of that, they fight, argue, lecture, avoid, hint, slander, blame, etc., etc. Does that sound familiar? People don't know how to communicate effectively. Uh, they can learn how to do that in lesson two of my nonprofit educational website. It's all about seven powerful communication skills that anyone, older kids and any adults who are willing, can learn to use. So, um, three causes of cutoffs are one or both people are psychologically wounded and they don't know it or they don't admit it. They're ignorant and unaware of a whole group of things. The third cause is often a polarized social environment. The people around the two people who are in the cutoff take sides and tend to agree with one and blame the other. Frequently that promotes cutoffs. Oh yeah, well my family that says you're wrong, or my department says you're crazy, or my church says you're an idiot. So environments play an important part. Those are three reasons that cause and maintain harmful, toxic relationship cutoffs. How can you end these cutoffs? You can. There are very specific things you can do. At least one, ideally both persons, need to hit personal bottom, admit their wounds, and start to reduce them. Please see my videos on hitting bottom and in lesson one, how to reduce your wounds. Um, each person has to take responsibility for their half of the cutoff, saying I'm half to blame here. I have to do something about my half. The second thing they need to do is stop blaming each other. They have to say, I'm not right, you're not right, we have a major disagreement, and we don't know how to resolve it. The third thing they can do, one or both people, is commit to learning how to communicate and problem solve effectively. On a practical level, that means they need to commit and spend time studying the articles and videos in lesson two. If you can't name the seven communication skills that I propose after 40 years study, everyone ought to learn. If you can't name them, you're probably not using them. That means you're probably communicating at about half of the effectiveness that you could have. See lesson two. Um, so what I'm advocating here, if you know people who are in a cutoff or if you yourself are in a cutoff, overall, I urge you, study lesson one, lesson two, and lesson four videos and articles in the website at sfhelp.org. You can 
reduce or eliminate these cutoffs and improve your life significantly. I hope you'll get curious and investigate this more. Um, here's a link to an article that says a little more than what I just said in this video. It's on the same topic of how to reduce or avoid or resolve um, impasses and values conflicts and relationship cutoffs. Thanks for watching.